Roblox may seem like an innocent game at first glance. But beneath the surface lies a dark secret. Picture this, war, controversy, and betrayal weaving through a niche genre in Roblox, the Napoleonic genre. Our story begins in the heart of it all, in Gaudia Sirtiminis. Get ready for a roller coaster ride as we unveil the mysterious and thrilling side of Roblox that's been tucked away from a casual observer. Join us as we discover Roblox's most notorious war group. Roblox is home to thousands of diverse groups and communities. Today, we delve into one of its most impactful war groups. This community isn't just about historical roleplay, it's a dynamic reimagining of Napoleonic history within Roblox. Featuring its own nations mirroring real-world politics. But as we'll find out later in the video, this story goes much, much deeper than just historical roleplay. In the year 2018, Roblox factions within the Napoleonic Wars genre were rather rudimentary. During this era, most of these factions relied on identical technology, encompassing everything from weaponry and cannons to cavalry and the intricate machinery facilitating the epic battles. At the forefront of this technological landscape was a renowned Wuptup tech, named after its developer, Wuptup. Simultaneously, another technology, referred to as Frontier Tech, crafted by the developer Alert Coder F, was also in use. However, it stood significantly inferior to Wupped Up Tech, filled with bugs offering limited features and lacking overall reliability. Frontier Tech was in dire need of enhancement. This transformation would come courtesy of a user named Duke Tyler Jones, who took it upon himself to rectify its flaws. Duke Tyler Jones not only addressed the issues but went a step further, creating a refined variation of the tech with additional features, providing an optimized version for the community. The genre's enjoyment took an unexpected turn when Wupped Up, dissatisfied with the community's atmosphere, decided to delete the technology. This abrupt removal left the entire Napoleonic Wars genre grappling to survive without its essential tech, triggering a significant downfall for the entire genre. The Duke family, led by Duke Tyler Joan and Duke JGH, consisted of a small group of friends. In the shifting landscape of the Napoleonic genre, they, like many others, found themselves without dependable tech. Thankfully, Tyler had access to his modified Frontier tech, and now all eyes in the genre fish shade on the Duke family as they become the epicenter of a technological revolution. On July 6, 2019, Duke Tyler Joan, accompanied by the Duke family, established the Gaudia Sertiminis community. Initially adopting Tyler's modified version of Frontier tech, he later embarked on creating a groundbreaking technology completely from scratch. This innovation proved to be revolutionary, setting an unprecedented standard for the Napoleonic genre. Initially dismissed as too controversial, the new tech raised eyebrows across the Napoleonic genre. However, after the first round of playtests, opinions swiftly shifted. Hundreds of newcomers flooded into the Gaudia Sertiminis community signaling a remarkable turnaround in perception. The backbone of any thriving community lies in its diverse nation groups, and the Gaudia Sertiminis community would reap the rewards of the member influx in except its first 17 nations, with notable leaders including Lemp of France, Artaudi of Austria, Rural C of the United Kingdom, and Otto von Klein of Prussia. The Gaudia Sertiminis community stood as an unparalleled assembly of nations, dwarfing any competition at the time. Recognizing their dominance, Tyler took decisive action by implementing a blacklist, a roster of individuals permanently banned from the community. 
This move instilled a palpable sense of fear, cementing Tyler's grip on the Roblox monopoly. Initially comprising of 30 players, this blacklist harbored a group of exiled individuals who would plot their revenge behind closed doors. This blacklisted group of individuals united under a common cause, birthing their own community, Europa Invicta, enlisting the talents of frontier developer Alert Coder F. They sought to establish their own technological stronghold. In a shocking turn of events, GC Nation leaders, Rulsi and Otto von Klein, betrayed Tyler, abandoning Gaia Sertiminus for this fresh endeavor. As power dynamics within the genre rapidly evolved, Tyler found himself facing a pivotal moment, compelled to take action. Artadi, assisted by his staff, Talahan, Adrix, Moravex, would lead Austria to be one of the biggest groups in the genre. Within Austria, a notable portion comprised of what we term families, similar in structure to the Duke family, each led by influential figures with sizable followings. Among Austria's prominent families were the Central family, led by Alabama Central, the Soder family, led by Father Soder, and the Van Buren family, who made up a majority of the general staff. On April 14th, a detachment of the Austrian army under Talahan Sternand clashed with an army from the nation known as Nassau, led by user Deadweight. Despite being outnumbered by 40 men, Nassau emerged victorious, dealing a devastating blow to Austria. This defeat sparked a chain of events that would reshape the community's politics. Alabama Central, head of the Central family, along with members of the Van Buren family, confronted Callahan laying blame on the general staff for this blunder. Amidst the confrontation, Alabama Central and the Central family departed from Austria, finding refuge in Prussia, now under leadership of Duke Kohl, the where they formed the a regiment. Artaudi, now aware of this turn of events, reached out to Duke Kohl, proposing Prussia's integration as a client state, citing the substantial presence of his men within the Prussian army. Prussia accepted the proposition, inviting Austrian diplomats to Berlin to formalize the arrangement. However, just before signing, Duke Kohl stunned the diplomats by announcing the treaty's rejection and ordered an attack, firing upon the Austrian diplomats. This treacherous act prompted Austria to declare war. The Prussian coalition boasted powerful nations. Nassau, under Deadweight's leadership, Spain, led by Advanced Iron, and the Ottomans, led by Osman Task. Austria found a sole ally in Russia, led by Randy Hamm. The initial clash unfolded in Austrian territory. Both Austrian and Russian forces mobilized swiftly, occupying the majority of Roblox's server capacity. As Prussia and his allies attempted to join, server constraints prevented their complete deployment. Tensions would escalate between Prussia and Austria until Prussia abruptly withdrew from the battlefield, leaving Nassau, the Ottomans, and Spain to fend for themselves against the formidable Austrian horde. The Prussian coalition would defend as much as they could, but ultimately, they were defeated. Feeling betrayed, Deadway of Nassau vowed retaliation seething over being dragged into the conflict only to be abandoned. Lemp of France was infamous for his toxic behavior within the community, regularly taunting and criticizing others. And seeing that a massive war was underway, a war that he was not benefiting from, he would attempt to halt the conflict. Through discussions with Artaudi and Duke Cole, he brokered a white peace agreement, seemingly ending the hostilities. However, Lem's motivations were far from altruistic. He aimed to shift attention to France, later releasing plans to the public, stating the planned conquest of bordering European nations. This would anger Austria, with their general staff reportedly insulting France's leadership. Lem, 
insulted by the Austrian general staff, would declare war. And now, the community's two biggest nations were preparing for battle. France and Austria found themselves locked in an intense arms race, each striving to amass the largest rallying army before the first war battle. With both nations marshalling upwards of 150 players each, the stage was set for a massive battle, poised to redefine Roblox's battle dynamics forever. Sensing the need to bolster Austria's ranks, Callahan embarked on a mission to swell their numbers. He successfully persuaded members of the Van Buren family, who had sought refuge in Prussia, to return to Austria's fold. This strategic move not only depleted one of Prussia's regiments, but also starved them from events. As Prussia spiraled into decline, it paved the way for a group of people to ascend to power. Vive la France! Vive la France! At the time, the impending first war battle promised to be a landmark event in Roblox history, pushing the boundaries of server capacity to revolutionary levels. Duke Tyler Jones had firmly established himself as a revolutionary figure, earning both admiration and envy. Amidst this acclaim, whispers of dissent emerged, likely from individuals associated with the blacklist, culminating in the creation of a damning document titled By Order of the Era. This document comprising nine critical points against Tyler, highlighting grievances within the community. Point two would read, Tyler refuses to hear the voices of the community and purposely goes out of his way to infuriate certain individuals. In response, Tyler openly mocked the document creators in the GC server, further igniting tensions. This forced Tyler to take drastic measures, intensifying community censorship and doubling the size of the blacklist. On May 30th, 2020, all eyes in the Roblox community were fixed on the impending first war battle, a spectacle anticipated to rival any in gaming history. The anticipation was palpable, with the stakes soaring sky high. The Austrian army strategically divided into two forces, one stationed in the north and the other in the south. The initial clash was fierce, with both sides converging at a farmhouse in the north. While a French infantry charge overwhelmed the Austrians in the south, the northern army mounted a counteroffensive, ultimately securing victory in a hard-fought battle. However, the tide turned in the second battle, with France routing Austria's troops and emerging victorious. The score was now tied at one and one, and the war now hung in balance. It would take a whole new front to change the direction of the war. Navy. Previously retired developer, Waptup, would return, joining the ranks of Gaudius Hurtaminis in creating the revolutionary naval technology. During the war, France asserted naval dominance over Austria securing victory in the first three naval engagements consecutively, and Austria managed to only win one battle. Faced with defeats at sea, Austria pinned its hopes on the upcoming land battle, staged on the map known as Austrian War Games. And Artaudi did not want to lose on his home turf. His forces strategically positioned themselves on the right side of the map, hoping France wouldn't notice the opening on the left so they could mass charge and destroy the enemy with full numbers. However, France anticipated this maneuver, launching a full-scale assault on Austria's vulnerable left flank, shattering their lines. It wasn't until after this defeat that Austria discovered the source of France's strategic advantage. Their battle plans had been leaked, and the blame would lie on General Morvex. And Callahan was not happy he would infamously go on to have an explosive confrontation with Moravex.
Jax. Who the fuck do you think you are? Where did you get? Holy shit, Marvex! He's gonna be so fucking embarrassed right now. He's gonna wear our fucking army plans. God damn! You're like you're still here right now. Do you have to fucking say for yourself? In the midst of turmoil, Austria suffered yet another defeat, fueling the fury of the general staff. I couldn't take the fourth out of that church if I wanted to. Fucking army wants Adrian. You better let us do this. Why do you fucking understand? You is not this is, I don't want this. This is what Morvex and Adrix pointed fingers at Callahan for the losses, while Callahan retaliated by blaming them. This argument sparked an attempted coup against Callahan, aiming to strip him of his power. Although the coup ultimately failed, it left Callahan disillusioned with Austria, prompting his departure. He sought refuge in the territory of Austria's greatest rival, France, where he was offered an officer position. Callahan's controversial reputation made him unpopular among many nations in the community. And knowing this, the Austrian general staff, alongside individuals from Prussia, notably a user by the name of Dennis, collaborated to persuade Kyler to blacklist Callahan. Their efforts succeeded, resulting in Callahan's permanent banishment from the community. Lemp's dissatisfaction was evident. He had developed a strong relationship with Callahan, who had recently joined France as an officer. Lemp allowed Callahan to remain in France under an alternate account, hoping to avoid detection by the blacklist. However, Tyler soon uncovered this ploy, prompting his outrage. Lemp's persistent attempts to bend the rules had finally pushed Tyler to take action. In a bold move, Tyler expelled Lemp and his France group from the community. As announced in a post titled Spring Cleaning, the post detailed the reasonings for Lemp's removal, highlighting instances such as prematurely ending wars with other nations for personal gain. This marked a significant shift in GC. The largest rallying group was now gone, and the throne of France was left empty. As GC witnessed its downfall in real time, the absence of France, a cornerstone in the Napoleonic community, took a devastating toll. Seizing the opportunity, Europa Invicta, founded by blacklisted members, capitalized on GC's vulnerability, enticing nearly half of its members to defect. Among them were Lemp himself, along with the Soder and Van Buren families. Austria suffered a severe depletion in manpower, leaving Prussia as the community's largest nation. Prussian officers, Dennis, mentally disturbed Nub, and Alabama Central would launch a massive effort to revive GC, employing tactics akin to the CIA, infiltrating other groups unnoticed and expanding their influence. Their efforts bore fruit as they successfully persuaded half of Lemp's former staff to return. Notably, Leo, Lemp's former second-in-command, returned to GC to establish Italy, while a user by the name of Hermann returned to create Poland. Artaudi was deeply shaken by the loss of more than half of his army, yet he channeled this setback into motivation, setting his sights on claiming the vacant throne of France. He was able to create assets gather manpower, and set up the logistics of his new France group in only a few weeks. With Artaudi's resurgence, GC regained its strength, retaining most of its original nation leaders while also welcoming some new faces. However, a noticeable divide emerged between the larger and smaller nations within the community. Nassau forged an alliance with the majority of the smaller nations, uniting under a single banner known as the Limburg Alliance. At the heart of GC's unity were its events, ranging from battles to wars. Prussia understood the importance of these events and diligently scheduled as many as possible with other GC nations. However, Deadway, leader of the Limburg Alliance, still harboring distrust towards Prussia for their previous battlefield abandonment during the Austrian-Prussian War, adamantly refused any collaboration with the Germans. This refusal angered Prussia, 
leading them to launch a campaign to dismantle the Limburg Alliance. With the alliance consisting of multiple nations, it quickly became a logistical nightmare to maintain, and one by one, nations began to withdraw from the alliance. Undeterred, Nassau redirected its focus towards who they perceived as the primary aggressor, Prussia. Formally issuing an ultimatum to the Germans, Nassau demanded an apology for their past abandonment, along with other concessions aimed at diminishing Prussia's influence within the community. Prussia defiantly rejected the ultimatum, prompting Nassau to retaliate by declaring war. Nassau received support from the Ottomans in Saxony, mustering a force totaling around 30 to 40 men. On the other hand, Prussia found allies in Great Britain and Sweden, amassing a formidable force of approximately 150 men. Despite the glaring disparity in manpower, Dedewey remained steadfast in his resolve to confront who he believed was the puppet master of GC. In the initial battle, Prussia's cavalry under the leadership of mentally disturbed Nub inflicted heavy casualties upon the Nassau Alliance, resulting in a slaughter. Undeterred, Dedewey and Osmond Task devised a cunning strategy for the next battle, a death trap. Leveraging the geographical features of the Ottoman map of Abukir, they identified a narrow funnel. If they could lure the Prussians into charging through this funnel, victory would be within their grasp. On the day of the battle, the Prussian alliance faced a setback as the majority of their general staff couldn't attend, leading to confusion within their ranks and playing into Nassau's strategy for victory. With approximately 80 men, Prussia confronted only 20 Ottoman and Nassau soldiers. Yet their repeated charges into the funnel resulted in heavy casualties and eventual retreat, securing a win for deadweight. This defeat was a significant blow to Prussia, losing despite their numerical superiority. Italy, led by Leo, would take advantage of Prussia's vulnerable state, persuading members of Prussia to join their nation, aiding in Prussia's second notable downfall. Prussia and its allies employed mass tactics to overcome deadweight, securing victory in subsequent warlands. And with the conflict resolved, their attention turned to Italy. Fueled by anger over Leo's recruitment from their ranks during a vulnerable period, Dennis proposed a fair battlefield duel with Italy. But they refused, opting instead to blockade future events with Prussia. This action sparked a cold war between the nations. Prussia successfully garnered support from France, Britain, and Russia to join the blockade, effectively canceling any planned events with Italy. Dennis and Mentally managed to recruit Dayax, a user with a significant following, to join GC. Dayax assumed leadership of Prussia, displacing Duke Cole from his position this influx of new players marked a resurgence in GC's player count, helping to mend the rift caused by Lemp's departure. However, despite this growth, development progress within the community was slow. Tyler's reduced involvement indicating his shifting priorities, leaving much of the community's activity management in the hands of the nation leaders. The Ottomans, under Osman Task's leadership, reached their peak rallying 40 soldiers. Osman Task sought to revitalize activity by initiating a series of wars, which proved beneficial for the community. However, even these efforts fell short. The Ottomans abruptly departed from GC, citing the community's inability to grow in its declining state. This departure prompted other nations to follow suit, dealing a final blow to Tyler's morale. And behind his back, Community moderator Graham and naval developer Wuptup collaborated to establish their own community, biding their time for his downfall. With GC on the decline, leaders such as Artaudi, Dayax, the blacklisted member Leb, and later Osman Task migrated to this new community named Men of War.
Gaudius Sertiminus's rise and fall serve as a cautionary tale. Despite Tyler's contributions providing groundbreaking technology free of charge, he ultimately faced betrayal and exploitation, highlighting the egos and toxicity prevalent in the genre. Deadweight would go on to shut down Nassau, releasing the following statement. And with that, Tyler, moving on from GC, joined the Navy and found comfort in a new life. He would leave one final goodbye for Gaudia Sertiminis, stating in a letter he wrote, I don't know what else to really say. I miss you guys in all seriousness. I apologize I have been gone for so long. By August, I will be home. As of right now, I am not sure what will come of GC, but my mind has had time to rest. I've missed coding a lot, and what I can promise now is I will be back. Cross the sunlit hills, shining so bright, a powerful state in a land of light. But just down under, lay the discharge dark, was split asunder by a single spark. Burst aflame, chaos ensue, the banner in tatters, though its cloth born anew. A stab in the back, much envied by all, attacked by many, yet he would not fall. A new land awake, heed my call. The old met their fate, but our flag still stands tall.